Hey what is going on guys, Alone here. If you tend to watch professional Overwatch players stream, they usually have a few different sentences they use when people ask on how to get good at Overwatch. They might say, just kill people, as simple as that, you just have to get kills consistently. Or they might say, just practice your aim and positioning overall mechanical skill, that will improve your gameplay for sure. Or, what I think is the best one of them all, which is the one I want to talk about in this video, is this one. You have to make plays. So before I explain exactly what they mean by that, I want to explain why I think the two other quotes are pretty bad for at least giving a quick tip on how to get better instantly. The first one being just kill players. Meanwhile, it is true that if you can't consistently get kills, you won't be much of an asset to your team. It is super vague though, and it doesn't really explain anything rather than just shoot the targets and try to kill them. Which everyone knows anyway, so it doesn't really give any further information to the person asking. The second one being practice your aim and positioning, which also of course as always is a very good thing to do, but people ask these questions on Twitch or to professional players overall to get an instant small tip on how to improve their understanding of the game. And you know, working on your aim and positioning, that will never be improved ever by anything anyone says. It's just you grinding and getting used to how all the animations and how to aim with your mouse no tip is ever going to like skyrocket your aim into anywhere, so that tip is also not that great in my opinion. Alright, so let's talk about what I think is so great about the you have to make plays sentence compared to the other two. If you don't know what they mean by making plays, it essentially means that in the moment where you need to do something to win a fight for your team, you know exactly what you have to do and you can actually mechanically perform and execute it. This varies completely on the situation, but let me give you three different examples to make it as clear as possible possible to you. So the first case would be you playing a DPS and you know that your teammates have a Graviton ready to team wipe the enemy team. We also know that the enemy team has a Senyata that most likely has transcendence to negate it. The play in this case would be to go into the backline, dive the Senyata to either kill him before the fight to completely negate the ultimate or force him to panic and use it not to die. In any of the cases you will have a free Graviton that could possibly team wipe the enemy team. So for case 2, you are Genji once again and your team has 4 players alive meanwhile the enemy team has 5 players alive. It looks like a lost fight on paper, however you have your ultimate ready. The one person dead in the enemy team is Senyata or Lucio, someone with a negating defensive ultimate to your blade, so the only healer alive is a Mercy or Ana. The correct play here, if you saw the chance, would be at a disadvantage in players to use the ultimate. Quickly kill their mercy after maybe dealing half her damage with normal shurikens and then after that slice dashing to instantly kill her, use the dash resets to get even more kills and that obviously requires good mechanical skill and experience with game awareness which could lead to a one fight. Instead of just simply losing a winnable fight if you actually just had the awareness and skill to do it. Only if you know that your blade is going to instantly get kills to get your team at an advantage in numbers you should do it. If you think you will not really get kills instantly with the blade you will have to jump around kind of sketchy before you can actually do anything you should definitely just run away now the third and last case i want to talk about is a bit of a different one so the enemy team has a widowmaker and you're playing reinhardt so let's say you have a soldier mccree junkrat or overall your healers that wants to stand behind your shield and get cover from the widowmaker if you would just randomly take down your shield and start swinging into the five enemies that are just rushing you then the enemy Widowmaker will for sure get kills on your team. So the best play in this case would just be to back off, keep your shield up, keep your shield, don't swing even if you see 5 players in front of you. Having good game awareness and knowing what to do in a what given moment is what making plays means, even if it's a big play or a lot of small different plays that adds up to something big. Now these are obviously just three scenarios that happens in Overwatch and there are thousands of different scenarios like these in every single game to be honest. What is the best play for what given moment? Analyze this, get better at knowing what to do in what case. Which sometimes is just to run, or if you're playing Lucio, kite the enemy Genji trying to kill you with his ultimate making him waste it following you. Or to get that one important kill to swing the fight completely in your favor. Simply knowing that this is the way you should be looking at the game when you play it in ranked instead of thinking oh I am a DPS, I have gold damage and I'm carrying obviously because of it, it's just so inaccurate. If a Widowmaker headshots both supports in the enemy team and then the DPS player also doing overall 600 damage, is that not more valuable than a soldier shooting a spam healed Reinhardt for 700 damage and getting 0 kills? Of course it is. 
So the Widowmaker is going to be silver damage in this case, but would have won the fight for your team. Meanwhile, the Soldier has gold damage, but has only given the enemy healer's ultimate charge, which actually gives your team a disadvantage. Alright, so this is why I think this sentence is the best one to use if someone asks how to get better at Overwatch. I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and if you did, please let me know in the comments below, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. And I'll try to post as much as I can now that I'm back to actually posting content, which is uh, unlike me, I guess. But until next time, have a good one.